In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this really awesome looping video effect inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. Now, before we jump into Adobe After Effects, it's really important that we have the correct footage to edit this effect. So essentially, you just want to put your camera onto a tripod, make sure it's static. You don't want any camera movement here. And then you want to make sure that your camera is in a manual mode and your lighting is consistent. Because if your camera is trying to adjust the lighting or if your lighting is changing in the scene, this is going to make things really complicated and the effect won't look great. So it's important that you're on a tripod, your camera is in manual mode and your lighting is as controlled as possible. So try not to use natural daylight, try and use controlled lighting if possible. So use your own set of lights in a dark space which you can control the lighting with. So in my reference, you can see I've filmed this video at home and I'm using some lighting hidden away in the second room to spill light into the scene. So there's not too much natural light getting within the scene. It's mostly controlled and mostly lit by a softbox, so a light that I have control over. Now, once you've got your camera on a tripod, you've got all your settings in, you just want to go through the process of doing a few different passes of the scene. So as you can see in my example, I'm walking through doors. And I want to make it look really confusing. So I'm traveling from loads of different doors. There's one, two, three, four doors in the scene. And I'm looping and doing a random sequence of all of these doors. So once you've got that footage, you can drop this into Adobe After Effects and we can begin with the effect. So let's just have a quick look through my layers in After Effects. So the top layer is this layer. And I'm going from this back door into this door. The second layer down is going to be going from the top right to the bottom left. The third layer is going from top right to top left. The bottom to second to bottom layer is top left to top right. And then the very bottom layer is going to be me coming out of this one and then walking around in the rest of the scene. So we're going to start with this one. So the scene will start here. So I walk out of this one. And then I walk up into here. And then as I go through to this one, I'm just going to make a cut. So I'll go Command, Shift and D to make that cut there. Now, as you can see, we're already up to around the eight second mark. So I'm going to expand the composition to be 30 seconds long and we'll zoom back out. So now that we've gone into that top left, we want to go somewhere else. So let's go through the next layers. So second to bottom is top left to top right. So we don't want that one because we want it to be confusing. So we'll go to the third one that is top right to top left. So we'll go for that one because that might be a little bit trippy. So we'll drag that one across and we'll just drag that down. So if we solo these bottom two layers, you can see we're going from here into here. And as you can see, because the lighting is controlled, you can see you can't really see the difference in those two cuts. So that looks really cool. And of course, if you wanted to, you can always close this gap down even more and then just trim the start of that second clip. There you go, so that looks really cool. I will make this file available for you to download, by the way, so if you wanted to go along with this specific shot, then by all means, feel free. I'll make that available to download. That will be in the description below. So I'm gonna walk into this one, and then I'll make a cut there, so Command-Shift-D. Then I'm gonna look through the rest of my footage, so this layer is going from top right to bottom left, so we'll take this one next. So we'll just drag this one across and drag that down. So you can see we're going bottom right up to here. Then we've got this and then I loop across to here and I'll make a cut there as well. So let's see how this looks. There was a bit too much of a hold there. So I'm just going to cut the start of that third clip. So around here and then just delete that part. So go from here. And then we're going into here. Now, at the moment, there's not really any overlap, but I will get onto this later on because that's going to make this effect look really awesome. At the moment, I'm just leaving enough of a gap so that we can't see any cuts in the effect. So now we'll move on to the fourth clip. So let's have a look at this one. There we go. We're going from top left to top right. So we'll take that one. So I'll just cut the start of that around here. Then I'll just cut the end of it. And now we can drag that last clip over. And this is me walking from the top left into this bottom right door. There we go. So let's have a quick look at what we've got so far and figure out what we need to do to take this to the next level. So you can see I walk out of this door. I walk up to the top left and then top right to top left, then top right to bottom left and then top left to top right. 
and then top left to the bottom right. And as you can see, when we're playing this back, there's a little change in the lighting as we're going along. So let's just go ahead and add some overlap now. So as you can see, we're going from bottom right to top left here, and then there's a hold, and then we go into this clip here. So instead of doing that, I'm going to extend that bottom clip over, and then I'm just going to draw a mask around this layer. So select that second layer, and we'll just draw a generous mask around this layer. Make sure you catch all the shadows at the bottom if any are cast. Then we'll just go into masks, mask one, create a brand new keyframe on the mask path, and then we'll go back to the beginning, and we'll move that mask across that. This now follows that movement. There we go, keep following across. Make sure the shadow is following as well in this example. Then just go through to the end, and that is perfect. So let's play this back. There we go, that looks a lot better. Now you can see the back end of this mask, so we're just gonna increase the mask feather a little bit to really blend that. And now we can actually get these walking a little closer together, so we're just gonna pull this back a touch. You can see there was a bit of a jump there, so feel free to update that mask. So I'm gonna to go to that first point, we'll move this mask across to the wall. And now that should help with that shadow. So let's see how that looks. There you go. And now we're going to bring in the third one to overlap at this point as well. So this is where I appear. So we'll make a cut there. We want there to be this nice overlap. So there you go. We'll go roughly a few seconds into this video and just draw that same style of mask again. So we'll just draw this mask here. There you go. And we'll extend that bottom clip again so that we've got that clean plate. Then we'll just go into the mask of that layer. Masks, mask one, create a brand new keyframe on the mask path. We'll move back to the beginning. And we'll move this over to the right. Then go to the very beginning and go to the wall. So there you go. And now we'll just update the end of that. So this mask is now following and again, Keep a very close eye on the shadows that you're casting. So you can see there's a shadow here. You don't want to cut into that shadow. So follow that mask across. There you go. And then as that shadow starts to disappear, you can bring that mask in towards the wall as well. So we'll just bring this in like this. And that'll be the end of that one. So let's play this back so far. This one, you can see, if we zoom in, you can see there's a change of light. So we're just going to have to increase the feather to blend this clip in. And now when we play this back, you should see that looks a lot nicer. Although there was a jump, you can see this here, this banner is changing. So we're going to have to change this mask. So go to the first one and we'll just pull this down like this. We'll go to the second one and make sure that mask isn't affecting that banner again. There we go. And now we'll just play through again. And that's looking perfect. So let's just go from the very beginning and see what we have so far. There you go. It's all looking really good so far. There we go. This, you see there's a small problem as I'm coming around the corner. You can see the mask, the hand there is just catching the edge of the mask. So I'm just going to add another point in that mask. So I'll go to the pen tool, create a point here, and then we'll just pull this over to the left like this. Let's see how this one looks. There we go. That's much better. There we go. So now we can carry on for the next layers. So you've got this layer here. So that's me walking from left to right again. And I'm just going to bring this fourth clip to meet the end of that third clip. Let's see if there's a change of light. There's not. So that's perfect. So we don't need to continue this bottom clip over. So we can end this one here. There we go, that's perfect. We can leave that one to do what it needs to do. And then I'm just going to bring in this last clip here. I'm just going to bring this in around here. So there's a nice transition in there. And again, we're going to have to create a mask here. So let's go ahead back up to that pencil and draw a mask around this character. Again, pay very close attention to those shadows. So make sure if there's any shadows on the floor, make sure they're being caught. And then we'll go into that mask, mask one. 
Create a brand new keyframe on mask path. We'll go back to the beginning. And we'll just pull this mask all the way up to the start of that door. So around here. Now we're just going to have to add more points in this mask so that we catch the shadow. There we go. So there's no overlap. That shadow is coming in. That looks great. Now we can just keep working through the process of expanding this mask and following the movement. There we go. And then at this point, because this door is opening, we can no longer use the bottom clip as the clean plate. So we want to transition this bottom clip out. So we'll press T to load up opacity, create brand new keyframe on 100, go across and pull this down to 0%. So let's see how this looks. That's looking good, but now we can see we've got this problem here. So this is where we can bring in the rest of this mask here. So we'll duplicate this layer. So we'll go Command C, Command V. We'll delete the mask from the bottom layer. And then around the same point, this one fades out. We want to fade this one in. So we'll press T, pull the opacity down to zero. Then we'll go across a little bit and pull that up to 100%. And let's see how that looks. There you go. Because we've got this overlap here with one fading out and one fading in, you've got this slight problem. So let's just get rid of the fade out. There we go. Now we've just got this fade in. So let's actually bring this in a little earlier. So we'll bring this into here. There we go. And that's perfect. So now we need to just go back up to this top layer and we just need to add some feathering so that this mask isn't creating this harsh edge at the beginning. So we'll press M, go into that mask and we'll increase the mask feather. Of course, if you wanted to add more of an overlap with these characters, by the way, so maybe you wanted one character to walk in front of the other one. So maybe as this character's coming around the corner, it overlaps with this one. Then in order to do that, you would want to have more of an overlap here. And instead of masking, you'd actually rotoscope the person out. So you'd go into your roto brush up here. So you'd go up to here to your roto brush and then you go through the process of rotoscoping the person out and adding them on top of the other character. It is a little bit more complicated doing it that way, but that means you do get that nice interaction between the clones and that will look really cool. That's the beauty about doing this in Adobe After Effects, by the way, because we're in After Effects, we can actually rotoscope and that means we don't have to rely so heavily on clever masking. We can lean more into rotoscoping. That's why I've decided to do this in After Effects rather than Premiere, because you've got more options if you want to get more complicated. But once you've done all of that masking, we can now just go ahead and create a new layer. So we'll go layer, new, null objects. We'll highlight all of those footage layers and parent them to the null object. And now we can go into that null object. We can increase the scale up to 110, for example. And then if we go onto the position, we can hold down option, select the keyframe button, and that's going to open up the expression window. And then we can just type in the expression wiggle, open bracket, five comma 10. And then we'll just click out of that rather than pressing enter. And that's just going to give us a handheld feel. At the moment, though, you can see that looks a little bit aggressive. So let's pull down the first number to two. You see how that looks? That looks much softer, but I don't think there's enough movement. So let's change the second number to 20. Essentially, the first number is the speed and then the second number is the amount it will move. So feel free to adjust this. And I think two comma 20 is just the perfect amount. This is starting to feel handheld now. Of course, feel free to fine tune adjust this, but just adding this nice basic handheld camera shake makes this effect look more believable. I feel like we've all become very susceptible of these effects. And whenever you see a locked off static shot, you know they've been editing the effect. But when you add a little bit of movement, it becomes more believable. So just adding that nice subtle handheld camera shake really ties this effect together. But there you go, that is how you do this really awesome looping clone effect inside of Adobe After Effects. Of course, I am super aware that this is a very specific effect and chances are you may not need this on your project, but feel free to download the footage, have a play with this effect because you never know what the tools and techniques that you used in this technique could unlock for you in a future project. So feel free to download, have a play, and thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.